G'day trendsetters and dogs. How am I supposed to shoot a video here? Moving ahead, with a lot of time, no pun intended, aboard the Time Bicycles 80 HX 45 gravel bike, it's time for me to present the long-term review. If you're a regular to the GravelCyclist.com website, Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel, or my social media entities, you'll have seen my unboxing and features video of this bike. You can see how it arrives at your front door. You will also have seen the many miles and kilometers I've been putting on this fine machine. Before I get into how this bike rides, it comes later in the video, it's time to cover the technical specs of the ADHX45, which as the name implies, 45 meaning at least 45 millimeters of tire clearance paired with a 700c wheel set. In fact, this wheel set does indeed have 700c by 45 millimeter Panorama Gravel King SK tires. That's a vast improvement versus the original 88x, which is an all road bike. In fact, is some video of a mate's bike, James of Ride Adelaide, with his 88x and this very 88x45. Hello again. Starting off at the front end of the bike, as you can see, everything is integrated. There's not a cable to be seen anywhere. Obviously, that's not going to please every potential customer or it may piss off your mechanic. But no matter how you slice it, you have to admit, it does look pretty good. It is admittedly a marginal gain with a gravel bike. The integration on this bike centers around the FSA ACR system, which is among one of the better systems for running everything internally through the handlebars, the stem, fork, and so on. And I have an entire video devoted to that system linked below and in the little box on screen. Studying the obvious, you must have your position dialed in. There is not a lot of margin for error or adjustment once you've got the bike built up. The all carbon tapered fork is reinforced at the steerer with Vectran or Kevlar fibers. Now Time has been using this process for a long time. In fact, they've been building carbon fiber bikes since 1987, so they know their way around carbon fiber. Reinforcement for the steerer is a good thing if you think about it. This brake housing for the front hydro brake caliper runs inside the fork, up through the fork steerer, exits the fork steerer, through the stem, and then into the handlebar. So there's a lot going on, and obviously some potential stress. Moving down to the bottom bracket, which is a press fit BB386 unit. Right there, a lot of people are going to be very dissatisfied that time chose a press fit bottom bracket. With that out of the way, draw your own conclusions concerning bottom bracket selection. This being a performance gravel bike, you don't get a ton of mounts, but it does have the mounts that I really care about. Those being the traditional bound which you'll see on the down tube and seat tube for your bottle cage and my favorite mount atop the top tube the bento box mount whatever you want to call it mount in my case it is fitted with a dark speed works top tube bag my go-to bag for top tube bags and they are handmade in chicago illinois and check out their offerings linked in the description below or the pop-up on screen also on the top tube, you may notice the BCS carbon fiber shining through the clear coat, paired with Dyneema enhancement. Now, Dyneema is the same material that bird spokes use in their spoke technology, and the bird spoke Sparrow gravel wheel set is the wheel set that I use predominantly on this bicycle. If you think about it, if you add Dyneema fibers into the carbon fiber itself, it's going to make for a pretty sweet ride. In fact, Time Bicycle may be one of the very few companies on planet Earth that weaves their own carbon fiber in-house. The wheels presently on the bike are by Industry 9. They are the Solix SL45. I have a review of those coming later. You can check out a preview linked below or in the little box on screen. Another feature I love, and it's very simplistic, the venerable 27.2 millimeter seat post. Adding to that, there is no wedge-shaped seat post clamping madness, which often infuriates me because many of them don't work. 
Dead Sea Pose clamp is bomb proof and it hasn't slipped once. The ADHX45 also supports one by or two by drive trains. Obviously this review sample is kitted out with SRAM's very capable force ETAP access wide two by drive train. I have a review of that group set. Admittedly, it's the first generation group set with a different finishing. Link in the description below. Well, hello again, dogs. You are really wanting your dinner here. Pressing forward, the time can be built in about one of five different ways with many of the popular drivetrains you'd expect from SRAM, Shimano, and Campagnolo. There's also seven colorways or liveries to choose from. This is a Porsche-inspired colorway, AKA China Gray, or I think it's close to the Dodge Challenger, the Destroyer grade colorway, in my opinion. And there's also five sizes available. This happens to be, do you know how hard it is to concentrate doing a video while you guys are licking my leg? Get out of here. This happens to be the size small with a virtual top tube of 537 millimeters. I utilize a 110 millimeter stem and a setback seat post to achieve my fit. Don't forget what works for me may not work for you. Bye bye dogs. The other thing to mention concerning build kits, Time generally ships most of these bikes with a flared handlebar. I'm not a fan of flared handlebars. With that said, due to the time frame, pardon the pun, of getting this bike built for my trip to Australia, I mailed them a personal handlebar, which is a compact drop FSA K-Force handlebar measuring 40 centimeters outside to outside or 38 centimeters center to center pretty narrow by gravel standards but again what works for me may not work for you the dropouts of this fine time adhx 45 utilize the company's forged carbon technology long story short time is claiming you get 20 percent extra longevity versus aluminium and steel parts which weigh more which is particularly important when you think that these dropouts at the front and rear of the bike are drilled threaded in some cases etc and with this being 2024 the brake caliber are of course flat mounted and the through axles are 12 millimeter by 100 millimeters on the front and 12 millimeters by 142 millimeters at the rear. If you need to know more information about Time's build kits, sizing, geometry, etc., visit their website at timebicycles.com. So that's it, trendsetters. That's the tech specs covered. Now it's time to find out how the Time ADHX45 Rides. Weighing 18.7 pounds or 8.4 kilograms with Bird's fantastic Sparrow gravel wheels or a little more with the Industry 9 Solex SL45 wheel set. And these weights include Panarazzo Gravel King SK tires in 700C by 45 millimeter with orange seal endurance formula sealant, SRAM Force ETAP access wide 12 speed drivetrain Arundel Devo bottle cages, Shimano XTR short axle pedals, K-Edge computer mount, and finally a Dark Speedworks Speed Pack 639D top tube bag. This ADHX45 is pretty light. Time made waves with the ADHX all-road bike, particularly when they exhibited the bike with 40 millimeter tires fitted and barely a skerrick of room behind the seat tube. Time went back to the drawing board and arrived with a carbon gravel bike that has excellent tire clearance. See how generous that clearance is, fitted with these Panarazzo Gravel King SK 45mm wire tires, and there's a nice little gap between that ETAP front derailleur, but the bike is more than that. Chain stays measure at 430 millimeters with no crazy drop side chain stay tricks, which some riders may bemoan. That makes the bike too slow. It's much like a long wheelbase limousine. No, this bike is a performance machine that I wouldn't hesitate to race, or in my case during the review period, Plenty of performance-oriented riding and a good dosage of stooging around the countryside, taking it all in. This was my steed during a month-long visit to my Australian homeland, where the ADHX45 traversed all manner of road services, and later, back in the USA, I took to soaking it on some nasty red clay mud in southern Georgia, and an ill-fated 200-mile mixed-service ride, and a lot more. 
It's an extremely versatile bike that I feel could easily be your one and only bike. Just add a second pair of wheels with some roadie tires and Bob's your uncle. The trouble with many performance model gravel bikes that are basically akin to a bigger tire clearance road bike is that often due to how the frame is constructed, they'll beat you to death, especially if you're racking up plenty of riding hours. I wouldn't say I was fresh as a daisy after spending seven and a half hours on this rig and 130-ish miles, or about 210 kilometers, during my failed 200-mile ride. But the ride quality of the ADHX45 is forgiving, especially when you've got your tire pressure set appropriately. No suspension needed here. Much of that sublime ride quality likely has to do with those Dyneema fibers I mentioned earlier that are incorporated into the weave of the carbon at Time's manufacturing facility. More about the speedy part, the ADHX45 is no slouch in or out of the saddle whilst maintaining excellent manners on every road surface I rolled across. That includes some pretty dodgy terrain, and in the case of this historic railway bridge that's no longer used or recommended riding, responsive steering, but not twitchy, just right, really. In these scenes, I'm using the ADHX45 as a big tire road bike at the 2024 Super Bowl Shuffle, part of the North Florida Free Ride Gravel Series, linked below, with Elite Wheels Crazy Drive 6 wheel set and Goodyear Eagle F1 tubeless roadie tires in 700C by 32mm. This ride is long at over 90 miles in length or 150Ks if you prefer, but it's not a road race and so on. Road bikes are the preferred machine for this event and in no way was my performance harmed riding the ADHX 45. Would I use it as a road racing bike? No. A Criterion bike? No. It's almost like an endurance road bike, but without the taller head tube or slower feeling steering, something I'm not a fan of. The integration on this bike is not going to sit well with everyone, but just about every high zoop gravel bike nowadays is adopting that trend and hiding all of those cables out of sight. Bear in mind, should you need to service the headset, those hydro brake housings run through the inside of the headset bearings, meaning everything has to be removed if you need to replace the bearings. With that said, I've experienced no issues with the provided headset, or for that matter, the other polarizing bearing location on this bike, the press fit bottom bracket, which has remained absolutely silent. If you point this bike downhill, it's going to do exactly what you ask of it, entering or exiting corners. Just be careful not to turn too sharply on loose surfaces, no matter what bike or tire you're riding. This bike's only failing when descending is your skill level and comfort factors as a rider. The same can be said for ascending. I prefer the seated position 99% of the time due to reasons of traction on loose surfaces. There's no distinguishable drivetrain loss during my stodgy efforts at turning the pedals, but it does well on steep terrain, even dodgy steep terrain, where you have to pick your line carefully. That's easy with the ADHX45. Additionally, no complaints about the mounting points or the lack of bottle cage mounts beneath the down tube, a position I call the cow catcher position. Even for tool storage, I didn't really miss that mounting point. On the subject of integration, I do like those bikes we're seeing nowadays that feature storage inside the down tube, and I'd love to see a future edition of the ADHX45 to include something like that. Did I mention how good this bike looks? It's almost a shame I continuously get it dirty. Notice how filthy it is. I haven't cleaned this bike in about two and a half weeks. Aside from uh, applying some Allied Cycle Works Grax or Squirt Wax Base Chain Lube. Look at that, Trent says my bike is completely bloody knackered. Part of the real world review process. Momentarily, we're going to visit the bike wash station and clean the little bugger up. I lost track of the number of positive comments I received from fellow riders about the ADHX45, which is another plus. You don't see many time gravel bikes getting about the place, so if you enjoy riding something different, this could be a good choice for you. 
In summary, the Time ADHX45 is a fantastic carbon gravel bike that I was expecting to be good, but it surpassed my expectations. In fact, the review took longer than expected because I really do not want to return the bike. Pricing is going to depend on how the bike is spec'd out, and as I mentioned earlier, there's plenty of pre-built options, or you can purchase the frame and fork and go full bespoke building to your wildest dreams. This review variant sans wheels is going to cost you about US $7,000, and by the time you add a pair of Zip 303s on the Time Bicycle website, you're at about $8,250 US dollars. By no means, is this a cheap bike but when you stack it up against similarly spec offerings from bigger name carbon bike brands i would choose this bike every single time it also helps that it includes a lifetime warranty so there you have a trendsetters and tuesday the dog my long-term review of the lovely time bicycles adhx 45 be sure to visit timebicycles.com for more details as always thank you for watching if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the gravel cycles youtube channel for real world no bullshit reviews real world product reviews ride experience videos and my favorite general madness often featuring this dog right That's right. As all of it is released to the channel, I'll see you in the next video.